Everybody, welcome to San Francisco. Welcome to, are you guys ready? All right. PC gaming is thriving. Million G. Last night, NVIDIA unveiled the GTX 1080 Ti. The stream was nothing short of horrendous, actually, which led many of us to believe. I wonder if they were using the 1080 Ti to stream this, but those really horrible NVIDIA drivers. And if you've been a long time NVIDIA GPU user, you've noticed that the drivers have gone to shit. Zill had a great joke. He would say uh, NVIDIA has some of the greatest minds make the NVIDIA graphics cards, and then they get unpaid interns that make the drivers. But that's neither here nor there. I am under the assumption that NVIDIA knows something about Vega that we do not know. The 1080 Ti is a slightly cut down Titan X Pascal. There's no joke about it. Out of all the rumors, there was one from a Chinese site that seemed to reign the truest of all. Unfortunately, I can't find it at this current point in time. The 1080 Ti is a 352-bit a bus. It moves at around 11 gigabits per second. The 1080 now also does that, which NVIDIA has gone and made the 1080 more reasonably priced. $499 for the Founders Edition, and I'm guessing onboard partners will be $450. This is a far more reasonable price for the 10 fucking 80. It's too bad it took so long to happen. But this isn't about that, it's about the 1080 Ti. The 1080 Ti is still using GDDR5X. I don't know why some people even thought HBM2 would be an option. Even though HBM2 is used by NVIDIA graphics cards, but not consumer grade. The GDDR5 is currently, at this point in time, faster than HBM2. HBM2's bandwidth, uh, memory bandwidth is around 512 gigabits and the 1080 Ti on GDDR5X is 484. So they're not too far from one another. There isn't a huge discrepancy there. Like I just said, GDDR5X is still faster than HBM2 right now at this current point in time. HBM2 is still being worked on. So by the time Vega comes out, or Volta, whatever, we may see HBM2 really just blazing up the trail, but also HBM2 not only having smaller yields, not only being more expensive, it also would have left the 1080 Ti had they used it at 8 gigabytes of memory, and that's not what NVIDIA wanted to do with the, with the 1080 Ti. So that explains that. Now, price, honestly, I'm going to say is right. I remember the 980 Ti being 650 when it came out so 699 isn't too far off and let's face it the i paid more for my i mean my 980 hybrid cool obviously the price is set to be somewhat reasonable considering how nvidia has been now a lot of people are you know going yeah nvidia they're heroes great fuck amd another major disappointment i honestly believe this is a preemptive strike without a shadow of a doubt nvidia comes right out of the gate Putting the 1080 at 499, reasonably priced, getting people worked up for it, so anyone who is on the fence is gonna go buy it. Anyone who's saving money will probably hold on a little longer so they can afford the 1080 Ti. The 1080 Ti is 699. The rumor mill was all over the place, and I'm pretty sure had Vega not been as promising as they said it would be, that Nvidia would have definitely had that shit expensive. I mean, let's face it, the 1080 Ti is out, right? And they're coming out, the pre-orders are late tomorrow at 8 a.m. or some shit. The 1080 Ti is coming out at MSRP. They're not hitting you with that bullshit $100 Founders Edition price gouging. On top of that, Nvidia made record profits this year. The whole time the 10 series has been out, Nvidia has made hand over fist money with the Founders Edition. They're up 9% from last year at $1.25 billion. Why on earth would NVIDIA all of a sudden lower the price of the 1080 to such an extent? Why would NVIDIA release the 1080 Ti and not try to gouge you like they did with the 1080? Vega's around the corner. Vega's probably going to be out in another two months. AMD did have their keynote, their Caspian spicy something. I forgot the name of it. You know, it was a dopey name, honest to God. I saw it. I, it went one ear out the other. Caspian and cream or something like that where they talked a little bit about Vega. AMD's HPC high bandwidth catch controller will double your usable graphics memory capacity in games. With this technique, it'll make your 8GB graphics card from Vega 
be as effective as having memory as high as 16 gigabytes. Now with regards to high bandwidth catch controller for gaming in perspective, AMD looked at modern games, the big games that push memory hard to find how much of that memory is actually being used to render pixels. And most games actually don't use more than 50% that they are allocated. That's because the current slash old GPU architectures didn't give flexibility to move memory and fine granularly. So with Vega, the high bandwidth catch controller, HPC, for games, it will utilize the amount of frame buffer you have much more effectively. So effectively, you can think of Vega will be doubling your memory capacity for games. <sighs> That's what they say. I think this is, I recall, uh, is that the same um, technique where the game would focus, like Vega would focus on rendering a scene, but only what you see instead of the entire area, because that's what games do now. Which isn't bad if you're doing like screen capping, you know, like when you do a free camera to look around and get fine details because the entire area is rendered. Vega would only use what the player was looking at. Nvidia even rolled out something that sounds very similar to me. I could be wrong, you know, like I said, I'm not infallible. Uh, let's see, the Titan X uses 10 gigabyte models while the 1080 Ti makes use of the new 11 gigabyte memory chips which result in a cumulative bandwidth of 484 gigabytes we've already touched on that which is on par with the SK Skyens HBM2 memory launching Q2 of 2017 ironically at the same time Vega is supposed to be dropping compression tile catch boosting bandwidth with the new compression and tile catch system bandwidth on the GTX 1080 Ti, it can be boosted up to 1200 gigabytes, which is more than achievable on HBM2 as of right now. Ah, fuck, I forgot to touch on the fact the 1080 Ti will also be 35% faster than the 1080. Um, Jim Hazong, if that's his name, I can't remember, also stated that with overclocking to 2 gigahertz, you could see anywhere from 15 to 20 percent boost in your card over the 35 percent of the box coming out of the box the stock out of the box 1080 ti is 35 percent faster than 1080 the stock out of the box is faster than a titan x and this is another if we go back what is stock out of the box this is stock out of the box faster than a titan x and with the overclocking headroom that we provide, you can get another 15, 18, 20%. If this is true that the 1080 Ti is 35% out of the box and can do 15% to a 20% extra boost in an overclock, there will, I really see no point for a 1080 SLI. You know, the 1080 Ti could actually do 4K gaming on its own. Also, uh, they are now definitely putting some more support into DX12. Drivers, finally, NVIDIA, I mean, fuck. DX12 has been out for a year. Basically, I'm I'm shooting from the hip right now. I'm going off of memory. Oh, well, since I'm at this, let's kill off some more stuff as far as news goes. Uh, let's see, AMD's Radeon RX 500 series is supposedly going to drop in April, around April 4th or so. Uh, for real, I've known this for months now. Don't get your hopes up for the Radeon 500 series. Essentially, it's pretty much a rebranded RX 400 series. So, whoopee, I guess. You know, if there are improvements, honest to God, they are very, very minimal. Uh, let's take, for instance, it's still the same. Uh, the RX 580 is got the same cores as a 480. TM units the same. Uh, ROM's the same, F3, wait, actually, FP32 compute units are 6.7 teraflops versus 5, but it was like 5.83, so, once again, it's so little, it's not really mind-blowing. Well, 6 teraflops, huh. Hmm, maybe that might be in the uh, Xbox One, I mean Xbox Scorpio, come to think of it. Uh, the boost clock is 1300 megahertz. Or 1,300 megahertz, forgive me. 1,340 versus 1,266. Memory clock is still the same. Memory is up to 8 gigabytes if you so choose. Still the same. 256 bit. The bandwidth is 250 gigabits. Yeah. Yeah, there's nothing here. 
that is really going to rock your socks. In fact, the RX 560 looks like it'd probably compete with the GTX 1050 Ti maybe. As far as performance, I don't know about price to be honest, but once again, the RX series seems to be geared towards consumer grade. I, I don't know. It's I don't want to say low end because I feel like that's insulting because the RX series is still good, not high end. So if you already have an RX 480 and you're not looking to jump to Vega or something, there would be absolutely no point in buying a 580. If you didn't get the 480, then grab a 5, but these things are so close. I would say when the 500 series comes out, I'd fucking buy a used 400 series or buy a leftover 400 series. This, I'm like, this is kind of a disappointment for me from AMD, but whatever. You know, it's just me personally. Well, that's going to do it for me. Uh, I don't feel like this is an amazing video. I was just responding to people who messaged me, wanted my opinion on the 1080 and so on. So I figured I'd do this really quickly and I failed to do so in under 10 minutes. Uh, I can't actually give more of a fuck than me. Break, comment, subscribe if you so choose. If not, you know, who gives a shit, right? And adios bichachos.